So you see my kids, my wife, uh, my daughter, she's curious about plants. So yeah, as you can see, the kids are enjoying us. So, so like I said, I think it's a great uh, family opportunity. Um, obviously, um, I would recommend coming on a, you know, a nice sunny day and get some great pictures and, um, and views. Uh, so currently, so Monticello is on a, um, I guess a little mountaintop and I guess Monticello in Italian means like little mountain or little plateau or whatever. So you can see some good views. So this is about an hour from Richmond. Um, so about an hour from Richmond, really not that far, about two miles from uh, Charlottesville. So you can see a lot of things. My son is still running around. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. <laughs> So I'm probably going to take a couple of pictures and, um, oh, I also want to take this time to say, hey, thank you for watching and supporting Travel Suppressing. My eyes are watering. Good old son is out here. Um, like I said, I want to say thank you for watching Travel Suppressing, supporting. Make sure you catch those other videos that I put out over the last uh, couple of months. Like, comment, subscribe. You know what I'm saying? A-H. And the thing about it is, like I said, this might not be the most exciting things in the world, whatever, but I do feel like it's necessary to see, especially stuff in your backyard. So, you know, whenever you can, I, I always explore, you know, I don't want to hear the, oh, you know, there's really nothing to do. It's always something to do. You just have to look for it. All right. And uh, like I said, how the algorithm works. Hey, I need you to play the whole video. All right. That's how the algorithm and make sure you like, please like YouTube got, uh, you know, requirements for us YouTubers to that we have to achieve okay so all i want to say um we're going to uh, actually later on so as soon as we get done with this part we're going to walk down to the cemetery which is halfway down the hill uh we can see thomas jefferson's grave and i'm, a, I'm assuming some um some uh slaves that passed away or whatever um then we'll make our way back towards the visitor center where they have a um like a little maybe eight minute video I'm not sure if i'm able to record the video but i'll try to do what i can and like I said, this is a view picture of the house. You can only go on the first floor. So currently right now we're on the first floor of uh, Thomas Jefferson's uh, Monticello. I got the, the wife, two of the kids that just wanted to come. So this room is completely empty as you can see. And I'm assuming this is uh, a library. So yeah, this is just a library, fireplace. So right now, uh, we're going in his cabinet. So yeah, uh, pictures. Looks pretty cool. Has a little uh, bedroom right here. Got a couple of globes. I guess he's into astronomy, as you can see. And we're going to go on to the next room, which I'm not too sure what it is. This is the bed chamber. Oh, this is the bed chamber. So 
We're going into a big open area. Not sure what's going on with that plate with her head on it. Oh, so this is the parlor. So right now, currently, like I said, we're in the parlor. And um, so John, I guess this is the room where he entertained a lot of people, I'm assuming. So have to read up a little bit more about it. So currently right now we're in the, like I said, the dining room, soaking it in where everybody used to eat. We have some silverware. Let's see. It is a quite beautiful fireplace. So as you can see over there, that was the foyer. That's the main area where you would come into. And then we just did pretty much a round robin of the first floor. So, so we still got a tour of the grounds, which we should be doing shortly. The whole uh, whole tour is about 20 minutes. Um, and like I said, self-guided, they have little um, checkpoints that you can uh, scan with your phone to see what's going on. We got more silverware right here. So right now we're going through an exit. Oh, that's kind of cool. They got a spinning. I guess that's where they have uh, where they hold stuff. Like you do in a modern kitchen. We got more stairs. Leads to other areas of the house. Uh, more stairs, like I said. Bedrooms. So currently, we're in the backyard um, of Monticello, where the grounds are at. So I'm going to get a good view of the grounds. So now we're going to go to the West Lawn. And obviously, Americans are going to be familiar with the nickel. But uh, Monticello is on the nickel, um, on the American currency. Uh, currency. So we're going to get a view of the house, what it looks like in real life. And for those who are watching this, you know, from another country, I think it's pretty dope, actually. Um, we got like a brief tour at the beginning uh, before we got to go in the house. And literally, you know, he say he owned over 600 some slaves and or as they say, enslaved people. And uh, he only freed about, you know, less than 10. So that tells you, you know, what type of person he may have been. You know, I don't want to speculate. So currently right now, we're going to walk from the west um, lawn, walk around, see what's going on in the backside. Have a nice little seating area. Yeah, it's a horse. So they have the farm shop right here. So this is the North Terrence wing. Let's see. Let's see what it says. Uh, 
happen. So I guess this uh, spaces for working, living, and storage were tucked under the main house and beneath the terrace and the pavilions. Okay, so it's anchored by the ice house and the wash house at either the North Terrence wing and the North wing served as Jefferson's garage. Okay. Oh, so they have the costume of a scrub woman, which is right here. Here. So one of the enslaved Grove, Bermelee Hughes, said every night, sir, in summer, the carriage bays were full and we commonly had two or three carriages under that tree. It took all hands to take care of your visitors. We suggested, yes, sir, and the whole farm to feed them. So you can see where the excavator stuff on. Yes, sir. So, as you can see, this is where we're at right now. And then that's the main house, obviously. So this are Jefferson's carriages. So this is one of them. Let's take a look in here. Jefferson's, so Jefferson's carriages. So apparently he was one of the few wealthy Americans who owned horse-drawn carriages. Uh, I guess he had about 12 of them. So two-wheel gigs were the most common carriages. So apparently uh, four-wheel carriages were rare and more expensive. As you can see, he got four. So apparently uh, Mr. Jefferson used, um, I guess, take the reins and drive himself uh, a lot of times. I guess whenever he wanted to travel faster that he would drive. They say it would drive powerful hard himself. Sounds reckless. So this is all pretty interesting. I guess that's the ice. I guess that's why they had ice or whatever, you know, cool them drinks down in them hot ass Virginia summers. We'll take a look over there, just waiting on my family to uh, come back. So, like I said, yeah, this is the ice house. Um, I guess where they designed it in um, 1802. Enslaved and hired workers filled it each year between November and February with ice cut from the nearby Revahana River shallow ponds or snow collected from the mountaintop. So the ice usually lasted through the summer and was mainly used to preserve meat and butter and to chill wine while snow was used to make ice cream. It's pretty cool. So it says about 16 feet across and 16 feet deep and was intentionally located on the colder north side of the house to help preserve the ice. So this is what you're seeing right now, which is actually behind me, the picture of it. Yeah, you can see the 16 feet deep. It's pretty damn deep. So I can see why Thomas Jefferson picked this place. Because, I mean, you really got views, uh, 360 views all over the place. So, so, so the family just came back. So we're just gonna come back over some of the parts. So this is the North Privy. 
which looks like indoor plumbing type of deal. Wait. So it's very expensive. This is Mulberry Row, which we're going to take a walk down here to see what's going on. So let's take a walk. Girl. So this actually goes underneath the house. So that's where we're currently right walking right now. So this is a store cellar where they kept all the wine. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, so behind this door right here is, uh, like I said, from the kitchen to the table. So it looked like he had three floors, including the lower level. So let's take a look. And uh, if it's a little dark down here, I apologize, but obviously we're underneath some things. So hopefully the lighting is not that bad. Yeah, buddy, we're on the ground. So this is the crossroads. It says domestic work at Monticello. So we're gonna take the, I guess where this is where the deliver the wine. Obviously, slave enslaved activities. He, I think he has wow, so this is Priscilla Hemings, was an enslaved nursemaid to Jefferson's grandchildren and favorite of the family known as Mammy. She was the property of Martha and her husband, Thomas May Randolph Jr., married to John and John and Hemings. Okay. So, yeah, I have a lot of interesting stories. Um... I want to take a couple pictures. Give me one second. So we're going to uh, continue our journey. They have a wear room where I guess this is where groceries and viable food stuff are stored under lock and key. So now we're starting to uh, exit on the other side. And um, we're gonna try to take a walk to the cemetery where Thomas Jefferson um, is buried. So let's see how, I think it's maybe no more than a five minute walk, five, 10 minutes maybe. They say it's halfway between the, the mansion and, oh, hold up. What is this?
So this is the kitchen. Oh, okay, okay. kitchen. Come on, pretty girl. So you have multiple little stone stuff, so. Now we're on the outside. Slavery at Monticello. So they had to have a tour for slavery uh, at Monticello. So we just got done with a uh, about 10 to 12 minute um, little brief from the lady that's standing behind me. Um, couldn't record it, but um, yeah, it was very informative. She told us uh, two stories about um, a couple of the slaves. Um, I guess about uh, an adolescent uh, boy who was a nailer who tried to get his freedom. Um, I guess he escaped multiple times and got captured multiple times and his story kind of trails off after he was sold a couple of times and obviously they lost track of him um she also tells me about uh, a black family that used to work in this kitchen uh right here and that she used to sleep right there with her husband and her eight kids and they um eventually was able to um gain their freedom and uh, the blacksmith he was actually able to keep some of his wages for where he was actually um like like I said being a backsmith um kept some of his wages and then through that he was actually able to buy his wife and some of his kids uh freedom and then they moved to um Ohio where they uh you know prosper and they opened up a catering service and um and obviously his wife was a caterer because she actually worked at the White House for seven years under their head chef to learn how to, you know, cook and things of that nature. And like I said, he was a master um, blacksmith. So they, um, when they, when they moved to Ohio, they literally prospered. You know, they, they really was into uh, the catering business, blacksmith. They did, um, what else did they do? Oh yeah, they actually participated in the Underground Railroad. Uh, they supported the, uh, the union during the Civil War. And, um, you know, they really was um, into education. So they actually, you know, like I said, took full advantage of their opportunity. So that was pretty uh, powerful and uh, it was good to hear, you know. Um, I love success stories. And, you know, obviously when you're dealing with these, uh, uh, these type of tours or the, uh, you know, stuff a couple hundred years ago, you know, America was built off slavery and, um, so it doesn't end too well for most or many uh, Africans, um, Black Americans. So, so yeah. So we're about to um, leave the, the tour area, and we're gonna make our way down Marbury Row, which is directly behind me. Uh, they said this is where the the industrial center for Monticello. So this one had all the stuff. Um, they used to like do nails and uh, right there in that White House, right there. As a lady said earlier today, uh, that that were where they would do um, the seamstress, where they made all the dresses and outfits and stuff like that for the slaves and things of that nature. So, like I said, we're about to walk down Marbury Row, and we're going to go to Thomas Jefferson's um, gravesite. So, I see you guys down there. All right, guys. Yeah. So, we're getting close to um, Jefferson's grave, and you can see directly behind me. On that uh, ridge will be, that's where uh, Thomas Jefferson Monticello's at. And then we just came down the Marbury path. So yeah, so right now we're walking and I do believe I was, had to say that's uh, Thomas Jefferson's grave site. So let's just turn this camera around. So as you can see, there's a sign that says Jefferson's grave and then the trail to the visitor center is about 0 0.60 miles. So that's the cemetery where Thomas Jefferson is uh, buried. I was hoping that we can get closer, but uh, obviously not. So let's just uh, see what's going on.
So apparently in this uh, cemetery, uh, obviously they Thomas Jefferson's buried here and a lot of his family members and I guess other pertinent um, individuals that um, lived here as well. Apparently, like I said, like the house was sold. So apparently Jefferson died broke because they had to sell a lot of things to pay for his debt. So, yeah. But that should be his grave. I'm assuming since that's the biggest marker. So, yeah, we're going to get closer. And uh, let's see what's going on. So, yeah, that's um, a little marker where they're trying to show everybody where everybody's actually buried at and who's buried right there. Like I said, it's private property, so we can't get no closer. So, but yeah, like you see, it's pretty interesting grave site. So, I mean, that pretty much concludes the, the tour of Monticello. And um, I hope you enjoy watching it. We, we enjoyed uh, taking you guys along. And um, like I said, I want you to make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, you know, what you thought of the video and uh, make sure you watch the whole video. Like I said, obviously if you watch it this far, man, go ahead and finish that out. And make sure, like I said, every, every Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern, I'll be right here on my YouTube channel, Travel Suppression. You can catch me on Instagram as well. Make sure you go to Instagram and hey, like and subscribe. You can um, actually, I've got two different pages on Instagram. I got my travels of Preston and also have my travels of my lifetime. All right. Make sure y'all um, just be on the lookout. I always update stuff every day. Um, and like I said, in the YouTube channels every Monday. So, all right. So everybody be safe and enjoy the weather, you know. Um, and just, actually, my wife, I don't know if she wanted to say something. Hey, babe, you want to say something? No? take the opportunity to come out and visit. We weren't able to do a lot of the recordings and pictures, but check it out for yourself. It's definitely worth it. All right, there you go, guys. Catch you next Monday. Peace.